Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how to build your first custom plugin for WordPress and uh, what we are going to build is a basic plugin that will add to your WordPress installation a new menu item where you can list uh, jobs in, alongside with posts which is the default of the WordPress CMS. So if we, um, that's what how it will look like so we will have jobs uh, menu items and all jobs and this item that let us add a new job to the platform so let's get started uh, let me refresh the page and we start from fresh so this is a basic wordpress installation it's the one that we used in the previous videos uh, to demonstrate how to use the WPCLI to download, install WordPress, configure the database, and start and stop the WordPress server. If you don't know how to do these basic tasks, uh, review the previous videos. Uh, so um, let's get started. If we visit the plugin page, we see that we only have this plugin and nothing else inside our um, WordPress website. So let's get started with it. So let's uh, first check how to scaffold. Uh, that's the name of this app command that we are going to use. Uh, so uh, let's see the help page. So the scaffold command offers a set of subcommands and what we are interested in in this one. So it generates the start code for a plugin. So let's call it. So this way you don't have to uh, write um, started code, but it will do it for you. Let's grab the synopsis. synopsis up to this point so uh, i want to use the ci and the activate and the activate network or the force flags in this demo if you need them you can refer uh, to the documentation on how to use them so the plugin slug is gonna be a, should be an unique unique slug so let's call it fpjb jobs and the fpjb is just a prefix that i am assigning to this but it could be uh, jobs could be this one the slug probably is better the directory name we don't need this slug, the this flag because it will um, scaffold the plugin files inside in an already existing folder but we don't have that and the the name of the plugin is going to be jobs board. and then the plugin description is going to be this one so a simple um, jobs board for WordPress and then we need plugin author which is going to be me here you can type your name then we need to use the plugin author uri and plugin uri so plugin author uri is going to be um, your website your portfolio um, url so um, my case is going to be this one fabiopacinevici.com and then the plugin URI should be the place where you um, deploy your plugin website I mean a website where you showcase to users how your plugin works maybe with a video uh, and some screenshots uh, which goes alongside the um, official um, plugin page which is built from WordPress uh, if you send them your plugin 
and I'll show you what I mean in a minute or after we finish uh, this demo. Uh, so the plugin you write is going to be in this case. If I can type today, uh, it's going to be wonderful. Um, let's call it the jobs board. This URL, it doesn't exist yet, uh, but in case it will be where I would put a website for the plugin. And then we use the skip flag, skip tests. Uh, so we instruct the application not to scaffold also the test files because we are not going to write any test for this plugin so that's it so we can copy this code inside the terminal and press enter and we should be all done and in fact we got a success message and if we check our uh, plugins folder we see that we have jobs slash board directory with a bunch of files inside I'm going to go over each of them. So uh, the first two uh, are hidden files where there are some configuration and in this case, this ignore file and a set of files that you don't want to uh, deploy to your uh, wordpress.org um, distribution. In this case, they are all the files that you uh, want to exclude uh, when you submit your plugin to WordPress and then the some files for your IDE, uh, a file for, for your IDE to set the coding standards and uh, the kit in your files, which is a set of files that you want to exclude from your uh, Git uh, repository in case you want to push this code into a version control uh, like GitLab, GitHub or Bitbucket. Then we have a task runner file, so the current task runner file. Uh, so default, you can use it to run some uh, basic tasks like um, the readme file, um, the translation, and um, yeah, so far that's what there is in it. Uh, you can have more tasks by visiting the current um, file, the, the current website. And then we have our uh, main entry point for the plugin, which is the jobs slash board, uh, which is the, as I said, the main entry point for the plugin where we will put our code. And then we have a package.json file for the dependencies. So if you plan to use Grunt uh, for your plugin, um, make sure you install the dependencies uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's out of scope for this demo. And then we have the redmi.txt file where you will um, describe how your plugin works, what it does, and that's the text that will uh, be used to generate your official plugin page on the wordpress.org website. I'll show you uh, that in a, in a minute using this plugin that I've built and it's uh, available on the official WordPress repository. Uh, so that's it for uh, the list of files. Uh, let's see what our plugin does. And so far it obviously does nothing because as you see here, where it is, the jobs board file is empty. So let's see uh, a list of plugins that we have in the system using another command uh, from the WordPress CLI uh, tool. You just ignore these error messages if you got them. Uh, what we are interested in is this table. Uh, it lists two plugins. One is inactive, which is the plugin we, we just wrote. So let's activate it using another subcommand of the plugin. Error. Yes, again, uh, you need to Type the name of the plugin that you want to activate, of course, or otherwise you can use the all flags um, to activate all plugins. So that's why I showed you 
this, uh, the previous command so you can see the name of the plugins that are in your system. So we have a successfully activated one plugin and let's refresh our page to so our dashboard and see what we get. So since our plugin main entry point of the plugin is empty, we of course won't see any difference uh, because we have no, uh, done anything so far with our plugin. It's plain and empty. So let's scaffold a new post type. So we have posts and under posts I want to put jobs so we can uh, write some jobs descriptions for our website and for our jobs board in this case and um, take applications maybe in the future so let's do it by using another um, another sub command that is in this case is wp um, post type let's check the help of this sub command and what we are looking for is the synopsis and up to here I don't, I don't care about these two flags so far for now so let's quit the code pressing Q and let's copy our no, let's copy our um, synopsis in a file so I've just created an empty file where uh, I'm going to edit the synopsis so this log is gonna be job job and then the label is gonna be jobs so the label of the plugin is this uh, of the custom post type is this um, name that you see here so posts media pages comments and so far uh, and so on and then the text domain is a unique um, piece of text that will be used for the translations if you want to translate your plugin in multiple languages and I'm going to use a prefix um, so the hopefully the plugin won't conflict with anything with any other plugin that we might have installed in our system then I'm going to skip the uh, dash icon flag for now I'm going to go back to it in a second and then we have the plugin uh, I have deleted the team um, the team flag because we will put this new custom post type inside a custom plugin which is the one that we have just created and it's the name of the folder where we can find this plugin is Jobsport, as you see here, and that's what the flag wants as parameter. And then we have this parameter uh, to pass, which is the dash icon. So the dash icon is a is, the, is this icon that you see on the menu on the side of the menu. Uh, inside your WordPress admin panel and what I'm going to use is this dash icon business person so you grab the name of the icon and you copy it uh, you copy here for the uh, flag and if you want to use a different uh, icon you can look at the um, Dash, uh, at the developer.wordpress.org resources dash icon uh, dash icons um, page where there is a list of icons that you can use for uh, your custom post types and uh, inside your WordPress admin panel. So that should be it for our custom post type. And let's copy that inside our IDE uh, in the terminal and press enter and we got another success message now let's check our jobs board you see we got this new folder so the plugin has uh, scaffolded the custom post type file inside a post types folder that's where all the post types will be placed when you use this command 
uh, and then we have a job file where we can see we have a bunch of uh, we have a function so this function job in it uh, where we register the post type we use this function uh, and then we use the add action uh, for the custom post type so we have a bunch of um, code um, which was generated for us by this um, WP CLI command so we don't have to worry about writing it has been generated for us here you see the labels uh, for our plugin uh, for our custom post type so um, jobs or jobs jobs archives and so on and then down here we have uh, some other uh, code and in here this is an array a multi-dimensional array and we are interested in this bit of code now so the menu position by default the menu position is set to null which means that our menu item is going to be placed at the end should be after comments let's check it now we don't have we won't see it yet and there is a reason for that and that's because let me delete this file that we don't need so the reason why we don't see anything inside our um, wordpress admin panel is because we uh, yes we have scaffolded correctly at the plugin file and we registered the new custom post type however uh, the main um, plugin file doesn't have any clue that this file exists at all so we need to require it so when we activate the plugin uh, the plugin read this file and register correctly the post type and shows it to the admin panel inside the admin panel so let's um, do it using the require function and then we need to pass to the require function uh, a parameter which is the uh, part of the file that we want to require so so then we close this with a semicolon now when we refresh the page We should see a new menu item with our, with our new icon appearing and indeed we have the uh, this icon the one that we chose and jobs and as you see it appears at the end but I want to move it up here that's why I was talking about the menu position before so uh, you can read more about this uh, by checking the documentation of the register post type function and I have it here and you can find it at this URL so developer.purpose.org reference functions register post type and down here down below on the page so around this point you will see that there is a description of this uh, menu item and these options uh, let us define the position so the minimum position of the element that we just added to the um, the custom post type that we just added so if we type we need to type an integer so a number where it is so by default it's null so this uh, array is null and uh, we need to um, this element of the array is null but we need to pass a number from 5 to 100 and uh, 5 is going to be below the post um, the posts so that's what, where I want to place it let's type 5 and save the file let's refresh the page now it should be moved up here just under it the posts let's check it and yes so we have this new custom post type and we have placed it inside our uh, plugin so this plugin for now 
uh, simply add uh, this new menu item to the WordPress installation and we can use it to add, for instance, a job description that we want to show to our website, inside our website. Before moving forward and showing you, uh, show to you um, how it looks like, the new custom post type, I want to do one thing. So if you access this file directly, uh, we want to show an error. So if I want to use this function and so if this function does not exist, we want to die with a message. So in case this function does not exist, we may be not using WordPress and this uh, code does nothing. And so we just want to die and say, we, sorry, it cannot be accessed directly. Uh, that should be it. Let's refresh the page, see if we made any mistake. And uh, nope. So everything is fine. Let's... Um, Let's move to the WordPress side. So now inside WordPress, when you uh, visit this uh, page, you will see that you have a new jobs uh, menu item with the option to add a new job. So you click add new and you can add a new job to your WordPress website. So for instance, and you type here your description. Let me see. I'm going to generate some large Ipsum text and place it in here. And we can click publish and view our job. So we have uh, now a new custom post type and it says jobs. Um, so it's part of the jobs uh, posts. It's not a post from your blog, uh, but it's a new custom post type where you can uh, add a description and use it to show jobs that you want to list on your website. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you is that from the um, from the job page, you can of course use the new Gutenberg editor and add blocks here. So that's a paragraph, but in case you want to add a different block, you can press the plus. Uh, icon and add any of the blocks that comes by default uh, with Gutenberg and you can format the post as you like, add the media or add the different sections and, um, and place it inside the category. Uh, so one of the default in in one of the next video, I'll show you how to create a custom taxonomy uh, for this plugin that we have just built. Uh, that could be like, instead of, as you see here, all the, po the posts in one of them as a categories and tags. And we could say that the jobs, um, custom post types as uh, jobs categories and skills maybe that we can use. Uh, so that would be, uh, a good new future for uh, one of the next videos and let's check the plugin page I want to show you one last thing before leaving you uh, so as you see the difference between these two is that the uh, plugin that we just wrote has been created locally and we did not submit the plugin uh, to the official WordPress repository so if we look on the uh, where is 
on the plugins page and click add new we won't be able to see our job sport plugin if we search it um, but because we did not submit the plugin to wordpress but if you look uh, for instance the one i submitted before so that's one of the plugins that i've built it has a different um, links down here so it still has the link of the author so uh, it redirects to my website but also has this view uh, details that gives you more details and that's where the uh, file that i show you before um where it is this uh, redmi.txt file comes into uh, effect uh, because what we what you see here is actually what you wrote in here and so uh, probably in one of the next video I'll show you how to customize that to make it this to make it look like this and um, how to submit a plugin to WordPress uh, so you can see a solution um, information um, frequently asked questions, the change log, screenshots, and the reviews that your plugins received. But uh, where it is, you can see that on this side, you have some more information like the plugin homepage. And that's the uh, plugin URI that we defined before for our plugin that it doesn't exist in the case of this um, job sport. If we click on here, we should get a 404 because I did not uh, put any website uh, under this URL. But if you visit this one, so if you visit the official website that I sent to WordPress and you visit the official plugin page, you will see that there is a website for this plugin where I've put some information, including a video on how to use it. And, uh, and that, that's pretty much it. So you can browse here, you can click the donate um, button or the support button that will redirect you to the support page of the plugin where you can ask me question and ask for a new feature or um, support requests. So that's pretty much it. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.